The best is yet to come And babe, won't it be fine You think you've seen the sun But you ain't seen it shine Hello everyone and welcome once again to Ask the Trexperts. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Sarah. Today we're going to talk about Deep Space Nine and we're going to talk about specifically uh, character progressions in Deep Space Nine. Indeed. And uh, we're going to pick out a few examples. Obviously we're not going to talk about every character in DS9. That would be a project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, of course uh, that would be the series with uh, the most uh, regular and recurring characters. And so uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to talk about uh, generally how that show uh, dealt with characters progressively throughout a, a, a series, how they, how they began at the beginning and how they how they ended up at the end um, versus the other shows. Uh, and we, we we won't talk a lot about, about the other shows, but just uh, just to say real quick that um, generally. Um, the other shows, I mean, TOS kind of had had kind of a static thing, right? Mm -hmm. Where like their their characters were pretty much, um, you know, they they they, had, they were set, and then uh, they did interesting things with them. They they kind of progressed, but like Spock is not a different person at the end than he is at the beginning. Right. They they didn't really each have their own individual character arcs. It was a it was a show where each episode was meant to stand alone, mm -hmm. and so. They were the same at the end as they were at the beginning, except they'd done some stuff together. And so the writers knew more who they were, as opposed to they learned. And you could make the same case kind of for TNG and kind of for Voyager. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like the, there, there, is, there, is a, there is a progression. The characters are somewhat different at the end than they are at the beginning, mm -hmm. but that's not because we're telling a big story where they start in a place and they end in a place. I think you, I think you could make the argument that um, that Deep Space Nine is one story mm -hmm. with a bunch of little individual story, many stories uh, uh, to told in some episodic type episodes, sure. right? And so I mean, you, you know, you, you could you could look at Cisco um, at the beginning and at the end, and you could treat that like a story arc in a short story or in a film, mm -hmm. and, and you could say here's where here's where Cisco starts. Um, here, kind of in the middle, is where he has his big opportunity for change, mm -hmm. and then here's where he takes that and this right. is where he ends up at the well, end. Well, I'd say that D DS9 has the most focus on the characters of any show. And Absolutely. I think, I think that's a result of them being on a space station where mm -hmm. they don't go places, they don't explore, discover. It's harder to tell stories unless you focus on the characters. Whereas Voyager and, and TNG, they have a crutch. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but they can go to a different planet every week. They can visit a, and introduce a new species every week if they want to. And... Um, so it could be the about, it could be science, it could be crazy background. aliens. Exactly. So, <clears throat> uh, we personally feel that there are um, that there are some characters that have a very natural progression, mm -hmm. and that there are other characters that maybe just uh, didn't have a full enough concept at the beginning, and that they too um, had a big switch, but maybe it was a little bit more jarring, and perhaps uh, it was it was by necessity mm -hmm. because uh, they had to make these characters interesting for seven years, and perhaps there were certain ones that just that, 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 that just weren't. Um, let's start with one uh, that, that is. Uh, let, let's let, let's start with a character that that, um, that 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 does seem to have a um, a good fluid progression all the way through. That feels like it could have even been mapped out from the beginning. Who would you say? Well, I'd say um, the first one that pops to my mind is Odo. Okay. Because at first um, you get this introduction. He's this gruff, inward um, kind of person. He's very private. He is short with everybody. He follows the letter of the law, mm -hmm. and he's this, you know he's a very certain character at the very beginning. And then over time, he gets used to the, the characters on DS9. He gets used to the Federation view of, point of, of dealing with criminals as opposed to the Cardassian occupation way of dealing with criminals. And he kind of opens up, and he becomes uh, just a friendlier character in general. Um, and lets people very, in. He's very complex, and and they also deal with a lot of personal stuff with Odo as mm -hmm. time goes on, where uh, you've got that stuff, but then you've also got uh, you know the romance with Kira, mm -hmm. which I mean I've seen worse romances. Sure. Uh, and and um you know she helps him come out of his shell a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, and helps to bridge that gap between between founder and, and human, and in a court or, or not human, but founder mm -hmm. and solid. And then of course um by the end of the series, whether you like it or not, we we see where where that goes, 
and um, you, you know which which choice he ends up making. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and so and so in, in in that case, I mean that's that's a that's a single story character arc also. You know, mm -hmm. um, um, you know he uh, he wants to live like a solid, and then at the end he's made this choice. Well, in, in a way that's I, not to get too far into other series, but Data has that sort of character arc. Sure. Um, as does the Doctor and Voyager, mm -hmm. I would say. Right. And so the difference is that. Um, <laughs> Is that there's a lot more of a concrete place that it goes to at the end with exactly. Odo. Exactly, and I'd say I'd say that Odo. Those two are kind of left hanging, unless you count Nemesis. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'd say also say that Odo's character arc is maybe explored a little bit more fully. It is simply Absolutely because it is. You know, we get into his psyche, we mm -hmm. get into every aspect of what makes this character tick. And it, and it's interesting because as time goes on, he does continue to come more and more out of his shell, and yet even by season six, he's still so reserved. Yeah. And, and it, like, there is a giant difference between Odo in season one and Odo in season six, but and yet still even still, by Lisa. then, you, yeah, and even then, but even still by then, you still need, uh, uh, you know, Vic Fontaine mm -hmm. uh, to help him, again, whether you like that or not, I uh -huh. personally do, uh, yeah. you know, with, with what is it, his way, mm -hmm. um, where, uh, where, you know, Vic Fontaine um, helps Odo, uh, like, you know, you know, relax a little bit, figure out how to have, have fun, mm -hmm. and then he uses that to, uh, to uh, you know, help him get the girl, as it were. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, what do you think about Cisco? I think, um, well, Cisco was generally um, fluid mm -hmm. as a character. De his character developed. I mean, at first he was this. He, well, he was still a commander, and so um, he wasn't captain yet. And he didn't have the and experience. And so he was a little bit more experienced. Have, yeah, inexperienced. especially compared to Picard, who we'd seen on TV for right. a while. Um, and so he he was inexperienced. He didn't. He was uncertain. He had just suffered. A loss with his wife, mm -hmm. um, so he and his son were trying to deal uh, with that and deal with the new place of having um, to control the station. And so you go from that to you know he is he the is he the, is he the emissary, um, and then how he accepts that role. And what's interesting is uh, you, you compare him to every other captain in, in, in every other major captain in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Every single captain with the or or you know leader of the thing that he's leading since he was a commander at the beginning. Every single one of them, with the exception of Cisco, wanted to be where they were. Yeah. And that's really interesting uh, because most of them were captains of a flagship. Mm -hmm. And who doesn't want that? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you, you didn't see Kirk complaining that he was captain of the Enterprise. And, yeah. I mean, you know, you know he, he, and, he and Picard, I mean, they loved their ships. Um, and then same thing with Archer. Uh, and, and, and he had even a bigger deal because he was the first one. Mm -hmm. And then um, and, and then uh, Janeway is going out on this really important mission. Yeah. And yeah, she wanted to, you know, go after the Maquis and, and do this mission. And she didn't necessarily want to get standed, stranded in the Delta Quadrant. Right. But when she was, she fully embraced the ideal of getting the crew home. And Cisco has that interesting uh, kind of uh, Old West thing. Mm -hmm. And 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 D Space Nine is compared a lot to a western, where like you know the the, the station is like a is like a western town, and mm -hmm. you have the bartender, and you have the sheriff, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, well, with with uh, with Cisco, um, he's he's got that he's got that kind of um, western thing of he's sent to this town that he doesn't want to be in. Mm -hmm. And and that that seems to be something that westerns play up quite a bit. Where like you know he's 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 forced to go to this place that he's unfamiliar with that he doesn't that that um you know there could be more glamorous things that he could be doing. Yeah. Um. But then as as the series progresses, uh, of course, naturally as it would have to, or you wouldn't like him, uh -huh. he start he starts to see it more more as his home. And I right. think I think that the that the key to Cisco is the emissary. Yeah. Well, but also um it becomes the key part of the galaxy. For the Federation. Yeah, well, there's I that. Mean, in the Dominion War, it's it's the last stand before uh, the Dominion forces conquer the Alpha Quadrant, yeah, really. Yeah, right. And so he's in this huge leadership role, and by that point, he's grown enough to where he's able to take that. Yeah, but also, I think it, I think it means a lot that he, uh, by the end, kind of sees Bajor as home. Sure. Uh, I mean that's a that's a really yeah, big deal too. He does totally embrace them. He's the he's got this role. yeah, and, and and I think that's really the most fascinating thing about him. Um, I think in one in one sense you could look at it because of course you know DS9 mm -hmm. has has all these you know re religious undertones and that and that sort of thing too. And so he's got he's got these layered arcs, mm -hmm. and I think in in one way uh, it would be easy to look at to look at Cisco as kind of a light switch mm -hmm. uh, kind of change because. 
he was always kind of brash and a little impulsive, kind mm -hmm. of. Um, but like, but but like, once they go to war, he's really that way. Like, he's yeah. really quick to throw punches mm -hmm. and to solve things with his fists and and and, and, and that and that kind of thing. Um, but. They really build it into his backstory too. Yeah. That that, that he's that way. Where where I, I just I feel like earlier on he doesn't have the kind of machismo he's got later. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's less cer less certain of himself. Mm -hmm. And so once you have, I'm right yeah. most of the time. Yeah. If if you have that certainty about yourself and you know that I can throw a punch and deal with the consequences. And do you feel like we got to see that unfold? Or do you feel like at some point the writers just said, no, now he's going to be this way? Well, what do you there think? is, um, you know, pre-beard and post-beard Cisco. So <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think maybe... Yeah, but maybe... She, but, but, a little but bit maybe, of gumption came with growing maybe, that beard. Maybe growing the but, beard was, 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 was part of it, where he yeah, was just like, I'm like know. this now, I'm growing the beard. So, I mean, you know, maybe there was a little bit of a... a Somewhat of a light switch moment, but it wasn't as Beards do and still obvious. <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, I, I just don't think it was as obvious because you also also had a bit of a, a, a change in appearance. And if if someone really changes their appearance, it's also kind of a good time to change their personality too, because then it kind of it feels like a whole package deal. Yeah. And you accept it more. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, and I only bring it up because I think that that was a criticism that the show got sometimes mm -hmm. with Cisco. Uh, because people didn't like Cisco at the beginning sometimes because of, of the fact that he just didn't seem to know as well you know, enough what he was doing mm -hmm. and that he wasn't... Um, he didn't have the gumption. Mm -hmm. And then later on he gets that and people feel like he's a different character. I think it's more complicated than that. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um... Let's then move on to Bashir, okay. which I think is the big one who is a bit of a light switch. Yeah, I think at the beginning they had mm -hmm. no idea what he was going to be like. They needed a doctor. On. On they the needed show. a doctor. They had no idea what to do with him. So he went around, what was chasing Dax at the beginning? That was kind of his that whole was, thing. That was it. Yeah. I did not like his character. He was brilliant for no reason. Yeah. And of course later on we find out what that reason is, but it's very obvious that they didn't have that plan at the beginning. Yeah. Although I thought that was a brilliant way to take it. Uh, if they hadn't done that, I'm not sure I ever would have liked them. Yeah. And once, and it all clicks into place once they do that. Yeah. I did like um, his plot, his subplot with Garrick at the beginning. Oh, me I too. I thought that was a great place to the, to take him. And that like, always stayed good. Yeah. Like they that, never they never went away did. from that. And that yeah. seemed like, especially uh, when when they get the thing with the implant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm with, talking in, about? In the wire. The wire. Yeah. Uh, where where um. You you get this you get this episode where it really seems like uh, they're gonna end the whole Garrick Bashir thing. Uh huh. Don't, didn't didn't you kind of get that sense? Oh. Watching it, we're like a little bit, yeah, but I, I mean be, because um you, you know by the by the middle of it, um Garrick is very much like you know I I, I only I only had lunches with you because I didn't have anything better to do yeah. and I don't really I don't really like you and mm -hmm. yada 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 and then they're back to having lunches again at the end of it yeah. and um it didn't seem like something that they would keep going with but they mm -hmm. did and that yeah. was that was a friendship well, that they, was so interesting they've really developed a friendship by the end of it and I, I absolutely that was just any time you saw Garrick and Bashir in an episode. That centered on them. I, I knew I was going to like the episode. What I find really interesting is that uh, Dr. Bashir, I presume, I don't think is until five? Uh -huh. Four or five. I think it's, it's five. Yeah. And um, so the series goes that long before they decide that he, uh, you know, has this. Um, that, that he has this background of being genetically engineered to be as brilliant as he is. And what I find really interesting is once you know that, going back and rewatching episodes uh, before they made that and seeing if there's any place that contradicts it, uh -huh. and I can never find one. Yeah. Uh, although I did watch an episode the other day, and I can't remember which one it was, but where, where there was, oh, I know what it was. Uh, it was it was the one with the um, with the Jim Hadar baby they found. Yeah. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's, it's, it's that episode where it rapidly grows and then they find out it's a Jim Hadar. Yeah. And um, they're, they're talking about... Um, at first, they think that it's that it's maybe uh, been like a, that it's maybe been genetically engineered. Mm -hmm. um, that, that it's like a member of another species that was genetically engineered. Mm -hmm. And there's talk about genetic engineering in front of Bashir, and he's uh -huh. part of this. Yeah. And um, and at, at at no point does he seem to like kind of kind of show his hand or mm -hmm. like or you know you know that kind of thing. Yeah. And of course, it's because they hadn't they hadn't thought of it yet. But like but yeah. like you you could look at it in a couple ways. You can be like, well, it wasn't. They didn't. They'll say, or you can go, yeah. he's just that good at lying now. Yeah. 
Well, you know what I mean? Because, because he's been doing his it his whole life. life. Yeah. yeah. So it's really interesting. Uh, I never found a part, a, a place where where the show really contradicted the idea. Yeah. And so I think that's really cool well, that they came although, up with an idea that works, and, and yet... And there's no contradiction, and they had no idea of it beforehand. As far as but I know. I think that's also... Um, um, you, you can also see it as they just didn't do anything with that character until that happened. <laughs> yeah, good call. So, so you, you can contradict it because they didn't do much with him. Yeah. Um, the, the places they were going with him before was he and O'Brien don't like each other. Yeah. Which is a great thing because then later on they become be the best of friends. And yeah. that's a wonderful arc for the series also. Mm -hmm. They can't stand each other at the beginning. And then that's a rivalry that becomes really interesting because they're still somewhat rivals while they're best friends. Like there's yeah. you, you still know that there's these things they don't like about each other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like a retcon. It doesn't feel like, eh, now they'll be friends. Yeah. Um, they just kind of grew into it. It seems so natural. Yeah. That happens in real life. You know, yeah. there's people that, there, there, there's, a, there's a person that you had to deal with mm -hmm. for a long time, and ultimately you discovered the things that you like about them. Uh -huh. And there's never this this turning point with them mm -hmm. that's just right there. There's never just, well, they were in a they were in a shuttlecraft accident together, <laughs> and they were stuck on a planet for a whole episode, and now they yeah. like each other. They didn't do that. Yeah. I mean, it was a natural progression. Yeah, they it's, sealed a hole with mashed potatoes, and now they called it good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is actually kind of how they did their friendship. Yeah. Uh, in in uh, we're talking about uh, Reed and Tucker, yeah, yeah. with a uh, shuttle pod one. Um, yeah, so uh, so so Bashir's really interesting, and and that's not to say that I don't like Bashir, uh, but he's one of those characters that I came to like a lot more later. Yeah, uh, I had that with Kira also. Yeah, where at the beginning I, she I, seems I to just be her such a jerk, and I think that that was on purpose. Yeah. And, and as it goes along, um, I. I, I actually found, grew to like her at the, by the end. I of found it. some of the Kira episodes to be some, to, to be some of the, some of the most impactful episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. There there were some. Um, that, how about the one where um, she's going after the guy who's killing all her friends? I was thinking of that too. Yeah, yeah. I I just love that one. By the end, where she's she's caught by that Cardassian mm -hmm. guy, and. Uh, yeah, that, that's just... And maybe even even earlier when uh, when she's genetically altered to look like a Cardassian, mm -hmm. uh, or surgically altered, rather. Uh, yeah. uh, that's, that's, really, that's really good stuff, too. Which is interesting, because because that happened to Troy with the Romulans, and that was one of the only Troy episodes I ever liked. Me, too. Which is really yeah. interesting. They oh, just I like Disaster, too. They just seem to do cool things with those. Yeah, but that's that wasn't because of her. Not for no, me. No, no. But... But anyway, yeah. um, and then and then of course uh, and then of course Quark is a character that pretty much stayed the same all the way through the series. He did. He was just as frangy, you know, greedy, um, you know, as as he was. But really beginning. layered. But a really layered character. He, yeah. he was he was kind of the character who refused to change. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Well, and he had plenty of opportunities to change also. Yeah. Right. There were times when he was like, "Oh, here's here's something I haven't thought of before, but I'm not actually going to do anything with that information." I'm just going to go right back to, the, you know, the, the way I was before. And there were places where he'd let his guard down, and places where we were, um, where he would, you know, you know, pour himself out to someone and say, mm -hmm. and, and, and say, and say, no, I've been hiding this the whole time, but I, you know, and I mean, he had those great moments with Odo. Sure. Oh, he had and a lot of great moments. It was the Quark Odo scenes that always worked, and you know, um, those always worked all the way from the beginning to the end. Yeah, uh, right. First season has has its ups and downs, but like that was the thing that always worked. No matter, mm -hmm. it, it seemed, nearly no matter who was writing it, it, it was always good. Yeah, it was it was, it was really kind of strange. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there are certainly other things we could talk about, other, sure. other characters, uh, yeah. and and I'm sure we'll do we'll do. Wait, part of the reason we did this was because we haven't uh, done a lot of talk about DS9, mm -hmm. and. Um, we need to because DS9 is so interesting and so layered, and um, it's it's almost hard to not talk about it like sequentially. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To like to like take portions and, and go with it here and here and here. But um, but anyway, uh, so obviously there's a lot of characters we didn't cover just because you know we didn't want to take three hours. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, if you have a question for uh, for Ask the Trexperts, uh, something you'd like us to talk about, or an episode you'd like us to review, uh, leave that in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Sarah. And we'll see you next time. The best is yet to come.